Good evening. I'm Spencer with uh, Bronco and VA9986. Um, I'm doing this video for Lee to discuss Kai Havertz's performance on Monday night and discuss Kai Havertz in general. Um, Kai Havertz is going to be a very polarizing player over this season. There's going, he's going to be the most analyzed player. There are people that have already had their mind made up on Kai Havertz. There's people that aren't going, that are going to be fanboys of Kai Havertz as well. Um, but I just want to go present the facts and the statistical data that we saw over the first two games of the season um, and basically explain where I think Arteta has him playing out to be and the good things he's done and some of the concerns potentially that might make people be hesitant to, to actually agree with the Arteta transfer for Havertz. But first things first, um, the Nottingham Forest game. Um, I thought Kai Havertz played pretty well, played in the A position. Um, Statistically, in that game, he did uh, pretty well. Um, his passing, he completed 88% of his passes in the first game against Forrest. Uh, two key passes, 53 passes altogether. Um, let's see, he had about 69 touches in the game, and whoscored.com gave him a 6.86. When I look back at that game, when I think about what Kai Havertz did, it was more of the movement, the positions that he opened up for other players, with Martinelli, Timber, and moving them into different locations. Um, Defensively in that game as well, uh, he had uh, a tackle, uh, one interception, one clearance, um, two fouls. Um, you know, passing wise as well, uh, very efficient, um, 88% passing. Now in the Crystal Palace game, fast forward to Crystal Palace on Monday night, the statistics are the same. Uh, the statistics in the same uh, in, in the sense that. He had 89% of his passes completed, uh, four aerials won, 41 touches on the ball, one shot. To actually even break this down even further to what he added in the Crystal Palace game, the first opportunity of the game, he passed the ball to, to uh, Gabriel Martinelli. It was a cross field um, right about the 18-yard line box, hit Martinelli in his feet. Martinelli took too long with the ball, but that should have been a given goal. That would have been his first assist second incident that he played well on on, uh, on uh, Monday night, he created a tackle that turned into an Inkedia's first post, uh, first first game, first shot where he missed the post. Um, he created the tackle where Saka got the ball back, fed the ball beautifully to Inkedia, and he hit the uh, he hit the post. And then you go fast forward to Inkedia's second chance where he uh, hit it over Sam Johnson's head. Kai Havertz, if you watch the replay, he is running into that six yard box right there ready to accept the pass. So he's got this intelligence that, you know, it's not Granite Xhaka. I know this has been the comparison that they were kind of bought as replacements. If you, But they're different players. They're just different mindsets, different players. I think Kai Havert sees the game in a different light than Granite Xhaka is. I think he's a more disciplined player than Granite Xhaka. Now, Granite, that is the downfall. He's had two games so far, and he's already had two yellow cards. And you could argue... The first yellow car was a shirt tug in the first half on, I believe, uh, the Nottingham Forest side of the, of the pitch. No reason to take that foul. And then also, he took a foul. Um, he threw the ball away um, when we were defending for 10 men in the 92nd minute. Got a yellow card. Kind of silly. Um, but that's what he did. So needless to say, I think he's just a different player. But if you look at Havertz from a midfield position, and not a goals and assists, but more of a box-to-box -box midfielder, I think he's doing his job 100%. If you utilize him as a forward player, there's still a mixed bag, but I think there's a lot there that is really too like. Kai Havertz, his best season was in Leverkusen, his last year at Leverkusen, where I think he had 12 goals and 6 assists as an attacking midfielder in the 10 position. Um, obviously, here at Arsenal, you have Rice, Partey in the back, and then, of course, you have Odegaard over here and Havertz playing at the left-center mid position that basically Granit Xhaka um, had had had, uh, had resided in, um, but you know if you look at his last couple of years at Chelsea, lack of true um, guidance, lack of true uh, uh, coaching, it looked like a lost uh, individual. And also, if you do not remember this, also at Chelsea, sixty-one percent of the time he played as a forward position, which I don't think is his natural position. I think he's more of a midfield player. Um, will Arsenal or Teta play him as a forward? I do think so, but as of right now, we've seen two games, and right now I don't think it's really worth, I don't want to say overreacting, because I know 
people view the game differently. Um, they have different perspectives of the game. But I think Kai Havertz adds something to this team that is different than Granite Jacket. It's not as forward as Granite Jacket, but he sees the game in a different light, knows what spaces he needs to go to. He gets in certain possession and spaces. And I'll bring up the heat map um, from the actual. This is from the Crystal Palace game. Um, I don't know if I can zoom in a little better on this, but zoom in. But you can see the heat map. Um, you can see the heat map. So he's got, and this is a right of rarity of, of, of two halves. And, and also want to keep this in mind when it comes to the Crystal Palace game. We went to 10 men, and the system had to change. We went back to a 5-3-1, um, which Arteta did beautiful with the substitutes, you know, maybe a little bit earlier than nice, but we had people in there that were able to make, and he saw the game out. He helped see the game out as a forward player, which I thought he would have been taken off there at the last moment, potentially left Saka on, but I think Saka had a poor game on Monday night. The statistics back that up. He only played 8% of his passes, only had three shots, just wasn't his self as he normally is, which, you know, he's had great games, so I'm not going to gig him for that. But I think if Saka had been a little bit more on with his game, I do think that Arteta keeps him on longer um but uh, the heat map is really telling and this arsenal team too this is what i want to talk about the heat map as well these players that arteta has put out there are playing more fluid football than they did last year um they're asked to play multiple positions in multiple possessions i also think kai havertz if zinchenko comes back this weekend, which I think uh, uh, Gunnar Lee had mentioned that he thinks he's back in the lineup. I don't know if he's back in the lineup officially on, on Saturday. I know we played a few minutes on on uh, on Monday night against Palace. I just don't know if they're actually going to put him in as a starter. But if he does come into the game, I think he's going to actually create a more, um, more opportunities for Havertz, where there's a little bit, maybe a better person on the ball. Tommy Asher is more of a defender in my mind than he is an actual ball possession left back but either way the heat map that I want to show you for crystal for the Nottingham Forest game uh, give me one second sorry pulling this up here but either way here we go Forest and this is at home too um, which I, I think he had 69 touches in this game see here is he was all over the place this is the first half. You know, he starts about in this position right here and drifts up here, allowing Martinelli to come down and play in different spaces. Timber while in. You know, you had Partey coming up in the right back position and Havertz is all over the place. So you can see, you know, and this is two halves naturally. So the positioning and the excellence in his time at Chelsea. So I, I think um, I'm probably a little biased and I actually really like Kai Havertz. Um, I'll be the first to admit it, but I think if you really look at his games objectively for the first two data points, there's 38 data points in a, in a Premier League season, but the first two data points, I don't think Kai Havertz has hurt this team. I think he's helped the team. Has he been a standout player? I would say probably not, but you, to watch Havertz and get a good opinion about Havertz, I believe you have to watch the players that don't have the ball so it's so my encouragement if you have an opportunity to watch the games over um and and actually just watch certain players because Partey's another one that i want to watch and i have an opinion on Partey playing right back where statistically it works but i don't think it works against pacey wingers which i think is the problem which is another discussion for another time but i encourage you guys if you have any doubts about kyle havertz watch him play when the ball is not in his in his in his possession. Just watch his movement. Watch the moves he makes, the passes he makes. Watch where he puts people at in possession. Um, that would be my encouragement to you guys. Um, but anyway, that is just my opinion on this. I think we have a good player. I think we're going to find a way to get the best out of him. Is he going to become a world class midfielder? I don't think so. I, I hope so. I don't really know. Um, but is he going to be an upgrade from Granite Jacka? I think 100% he will be. Um, but again, my name is Spencer. I'm with uh, Bronco and VA9986. Um, that is my YouTube channel. I do uh, Arsenal stuff. I do NFL. I do college football. And I do video games occasionally. You can catch me on Instagram at Arsenal9986 and Twitter at 9986. 
anyway, thanks for having me on, Lee. I appreciate it. But you guys, up to Arsenal. Have a good day.